Noah and his family did not just spend 40 days and nights in the ark during the flood. They had to wait for many months after the flood ended for the waters to subside enough for them to leave the ark. All told, they were in the ark for an entire year. When the Torah describes Noah and his family leaving the ark, it uses an unusual word to tell us that only Noah and his family remained among humanity. The commentators say that the reason for that unusual word is to suggest that Noah wasn't 100% when he left the ark. He had been diminished. Why? One explanation is that one time during that year that he was in the ark, he was late to feed the lion, and the lion kicked him. And so he became somewhat crippled, and so he was limping when he left the ark. Now, I get it. The big guy has to eat. But can we expect perfection? The Talmud tells us that years later, Noah's son Shem met the loyal servant of Abraham, Eliezer. And Eliezer asked Shem, what was it like during that year in the ark? And Shem said it was unbelievably difficult. Some animals ate during the day, some at night. We spent all of our time taking care of them. The Medrash goes further and says that Noah and his sons did not taste sleep for that entire year. So I ask you, I understand that maybe Noah violated the prohibition, according to some, of causing pain to animals. But he was late one time to feed one animal. Does he deserve to get injured? I saw two answers to this question that I think are very good ones. Number one, most of the time, God realizes we're human. He doesn't expect superhuman effort or extraordinary effort from us. It's hard enough to observe the commandments without having to be a superman. But sometimes he does expect more. If there's a flood destroying the world and you're Noah, you're the guy who's been chosen, you and your family, to repopulate humanity and to watch over what's left of the animal kingdom so that it can repopulate, then there's no margin for error. Perfection is demanded. You've got to put in superhuman, extraordinary effort. And nowadays, there is a flood again. There's a flood of misinformation. There's a flood of temptation. There's a flood of ignorance. Put aside the labels, observant and non-observant. There are so many Jews who don't know much about Judaism. So many Jews who have read a lot of Mark Twain, but not a word of Maimonides. Who have read a lot of J.K. Rowling, but no Rashi. And so we who have some knowledge have to put an extraordinary effort to share that with our fellow Jews. And a second answer. The problem wasn't that Noah was late one time to feed one animal. The problem was that he was late one time to feed the lion. The king of the jungle. You don't sleep on the lion. That's dangerous. If you're going to be late to feed an animal, be late to feed something small and cute and furry and cuddly. Not a lion. And so perhaps what was going on is that Noah didn't have his priorities in order. We all do that. We spend way too much time on things that are trivial, foolish, stupid, and not nearly enough time on the things that are really important, especially things involving spirituality. And when we make that mistake, that mistake that Noah made, it could prove to have terrible consequences, painful ones or dangerous ones.